really think he's pressing. He's getting no help around him. He's playing from behind. He's running for his life, and they can't run the football. Uh, recently, who did we see? Oh, Seattle struggled the week before and the week before that, uh, and then um, uh, Sunday night against the Patriots, they actually they actually went out and committed to the run. And when they committed to the run, they got C.J. Proce involved. It opened up everything, and Russell Wilson took advantage of it. I get it that I don't know that New England's secondary is very good, but if you can't commit to the run in the NFL, then he, nobody is that good to where you're not stopping them. If you know what they're going to do, you can stop them. And, and Green Bay can't run the football. Rodgers is going to run for his life. That's the end of that. I want to bring up two more teams that I think are huge disappointments this year. Um, one of which you and I both discussed before, prior to the season beginning. Uh, they fell into the category of the topic of Super Bowl hangover, and that's the Carolina Panthers. Uh, they're a flop. Are they a disappointment? Are they a surprise? No, I didn't think that they were going to be a stellar team this year. I want to say I had them somewhere in the 7, 9, 8, and 8 department. I didn't have them in the holy smokes, you guys can't win department. Uh, Every time it looks like they're going to right the ship, they don't. Uh, I don't know that Cam's the same player that he was last year or anywhere close to it. (laughs) I can only, uh, you know, this this, uh, GM of the – you know, the miserable, uh, hapless franchise that is the Canton Crackers can only sit back and laugh at that, um, relying yeah, on Cam Newton this year. I, you know what, Cam? I'm sorry, buddy. I did it to you. <laughs> I, I'm, the, I'm, I'm the reason. I did it. I'm sorry. I, I kind of feel like I need to send you like a, you know, like a, like a apology card or just something to, you know, obviously yeah, I, don't have the, do. I don't have your money to send you anything that you could want, but maybe just a, thought, a card to know that I, I do apologize and I am sincere about it. I did it to you. I did Not it. Not bad. My yeah, bad, did, dude. You, you stuck Cam, and you know, at the draft back in August when you said Cam Newton, I kind of grinned like, oh boy. <laughs> oh, Cam, what's going to happen to you? This poor guy. Yeah, it's, it's similar to the Canton. It's like the Madden curse. It's it's not too much different. But that Carolina Panther team is three and six. Uh, they're just not dominant. Defensively, not dominant. Not very good. I don't know that Josh Norman makes all that difference. He definitely makes some. He's helped he Washington. Makes some. He makes some, but I mean, he's. Washington's yeah, a better team with him than they were without him. There's no doubt. Uh, three, but Cam, three and six. Uh, yeah, uh, Carolina is three and six. If that's you just ask me. Yeah. Yeah, three and six. Cam, uh, yeah, right. Cam hasn't been impressive. Hasn't looked elite. Hasn't looked confident. Let's I, not forget I, I, another. You know, and there's another team out there too. No, Cam has not. He has not no, looked it's, good. It's he just, he's another one that you're going to beat me to it. But go ahead. I'm saying I'm going to go the Cincinnati Bungles. They're the Bungles. They're to me. They're the Bungles again. They okay. have. And what I really, what I really thought about this team before the season started, I thought that what they identified, they had a really good defense that I've just not seen this year. No, I haven't either. It's it's actually not good at all. It's, it's really not. And that's the most surprising thing about the Bengals. I thought, if anything, I mean, we know AJ Green is a stud. That he. And sure. that's, and Andy Dalton hasn't been bad in his own no. right. He's not. Andy Dalton is not bad. Is he elite? No, but he's not bad. Uh, and their offense is bad, but their defense is what shocked me. How you know how bad the defense has been? Because that's one thing that I thought that you know would have you know would really was really kind of their uh, how sh- how should I say there was not so much their bread and butter, but that was a very very big strength of that team is was they could yeah, play. Yeah, that was defense. their signature is that they were going to hit you in the mouth, they were going to hit you hard. You were going to go to see uh, to Cincinnati and play in November and December, and it wasn't going to be an easy game. It was going to be physical. Look, Vontez mm-hmm. Burfecht can flat out play, and he can hit and thump. Uh, what's his name? Captain Thano shows no moisy, man. He's, and that's it. Geno Atkins up front is is really really a monster in the middle. Uh, but I think losing guys like Adam Jones. Losing playmakers in the secondary can really affect the defense. I don't disagree with you. I think Cincinnati's definitely another team uh, that really I had higher hopes for. But this is the year that Marvin Lewis loses his job. They're three, five, and one. They could potentially finish this season uh, under the eight win, under the eight win marker. And if they finish under eight wins, Marvin Lewis has to go. Yeah, he's he's got to go. I think if they don't make the playoffs, job. he's got to go. He he does. At that point, you'll know that his voice has had an expiration date. That is the division that is still up for grabs and kind of winnable. Because if you want, to, at this Down juncture, I think there's, I think there's hope for this team. But at four and five, you got to start thinking. That's kind of disappointing to what we all thought they would be as the Pittsburgh Steelers. 
I'll tell you what. The, the Ravens are 5-4. and four, The Steelers are 4-5. and five, The Bengals are 3-5-1. and one. All the Browns have to do is get hot. <laughs> <laughs> Only one. Hey, let's use that Cleveland moniker right there. Only one thing left to do, Brownies: win the whole fucking thing. <laughs> All they got to do is get hot. They can win six. You know, there's two dudes sitting in a bar somewhere in northeastern Ohio going, "I'm telling you, dude, they can just win six straight. They can win six straight. They're six and ten. Baltimore's Cody, Ke- out. Cody Kessler's starting to get the feel, even though we know he might not even start, but he's starting to get the feel." The Ravens are going to lose out and be five and eleven. Six and ten can win this division. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I admire it. I do. I admire it. They're only oh. believe that you're not looking at a quick statistic. The Cincinnati Bengals have scored 187 points this year. The Cleveland Browns have scored 175. Cincinnati has offensive problems too. Yeah, they but they they've, they've uh, found. The Browns sit at oh, you know, the Browns sit at oh and ten, and the Bengals they they have won three of them. So let me and one you, happened to be one you, happened to be against the Browns. Misses. You may or may not want to chuckle at this, but let me tell you who that Bengals offense misses. AJ Green is a stud. You have two very serviceable running backs in Muhammad Bernard. Sanu. Because they miss Muhammad Sanu. The guy's a good receiver. He's a high he's a high mark number two, and that high mark number two to me takes pressure off your number one. It takes pressure off your tight end, Tyler Eifert, who's just coming back. They miss He's that stud. tight end number two. Yeah, yeah but, Eifert's a stud. As far as the offense goes, I haven't seen – I mean, A.J. Green hasn't showed any problems of not having a number two no, wide receiver. Great. That guy's having a hell of a year. He's great. He is a great player. Actually, he's, he's becoming slow, but sure, the more I watch him play, one of my favorites. He's a special player. But I, I want to throw one more team out there because we're going to move on to a couple other topics. Um, let's not forget about the Arizona Cardinals. This is a team that, uh, that last year I had them pick to win it all. Doesn't they were my Super Bowl, They were my Super Bowl pick, but I'm the same guy that went one and eleven this week, or, or whatever, whatever have you. So, yeah, that I don't was, mean anything. Um, uh, yeah, I'm just I'm watching this Cardinal team, and I had just such so much high expectations for Bruce Arians. Um, David Johnson, I think, is probably the best running back um, in the NFC, along with guys like Zeke. AFC, I like guys like Le'Veon Bell, but who doesn't? Um, David Johnson's a special athlete is what I really want to say there. I think Larry Fitzgerald is, without question, a, a first ballot Hall of Famer. Yep, no doubt. He's first ballot, but I, I just I don't Carson understand. Carson Palmer what, is not. No, That's he's not. Carson. No, Carson Palmer is actually the, the – he is, in my eyes, the weak, leak, the weak link on this offense. That line's yeah. not, not bad. Hasn't been great this year. But Palmer is his uh, his lack of mobility. He is a statue in the pocket. Uh, any kind of pressure, you can count on it. You can count on it. He's not getting away from anybody. You know, He's Arizona just, not yeah, having. I thought what I thought was really. I thought the Arizona Cardinals defense was very was very very good, and that you know that really hasn't been nearly as good as it was last year either. No, it, it hasn't been special at all. Um, don't they don't make the plays like they did last year? Tyron Matthews been hurt uh, and not healthy most of the season. He is a difference maker. Uh, Patrick Peterson is a difference maker as well. Uh, just they're not getting the pressure. They're just not doing things they need to be doing defensively, offensively. But look, I don't look. Arizona Cardinals are done. This this isn't even a playoff team. Not even a playoff team right now. There is a potential chance that the Los Angeles Rams could take a wild card out of this division. Think about that for a second. I have thought about it. It's a scary thought. That's just it goes is. to show you. That goes to show you how, how you know how awful the NFC has really been this year. And, it, and to go think, what is the strongest division, hands down, not even close in the, the NFC East. right now? It, the, it's East, the East is exactly, exactly right. It was called the NFC least last year because of how bad it was. Think yeah, and that, that is the beauty of the NFL. Is from from any given season to any given season, you can see some good things. Uh, Washington, Philadelphia, and the Giants aren't out of anything. Actually, the NFC East is. It's a good division. It's the best in football. It's the best in football right now. It's the second best in football. Are you going to go AFC West on me? I, I have to. You have three teams that are seven and two. With Denver seven and three, you have three teams with seven wins. That's pretty solid. Yeah, it's San yeah, Diego's yeah, a team. Yeah, yeah, fair San enough. Diego scored two hundred ninety-two points and lost six games. They have no defense, but they've lost. Uh, San Diego could very easily be a six and four team. Very easily. 
They lost about three games on last-minute fumbles. Phil Rivers threw that game away last week against Miami. Uh, that's, a, that's a team that could very easily be over 500. So, yeah, I think the AFC West is, by record, an excellent division. We'll find yeah, out. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree, because Philly, Philly, the Giants, I mean, Dallas has been great, but Philly, the Giants, and, you know, the Redskins, they've all been pretty good, but they're kind of inconsistent at times. Okay. Yeah, you just, yeah, you just don't know exactly what you got there all the time. Um, I do want to point out something. We mentioned three teams in particular, uh, the Green Bay Packers, the Arizona Cardinals, and the Carolina Panthers, these are three teams that at one point or another have had quarterbacks that would be considered elite. Rodgers, Palmer, Newton. Let me throw a couple things at you this year. Now, Rodgers has put up some good numbers. 2,410 uh, 2, yards, 22 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. He's run, run for three touchdowns. Cam Newton, 1,994 passing yards, 10 touchdowns, seven interceptions, four rushing touchdowns. <laughs> Yeah, that's got to sting. Uh, that's fucking hurt. <laughs> it's got to. Carson Palmer, 11 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, no rushing touchdowns. Carson Palmer will never run for a rushing touchdown anywhere outside of the one-yard line. Awful quarterback play from Cam Newton and Carson Palmer. It's actually been a lot of awful quarterback play throughout the league this year, which was actually the, the – what was it? The, um, the two games leading up, the Cowboys and Steelers, Excellent quarterback play on both sides. And in the Sunday night game, Seattle, New England, excellent quarterback play on both sides. Uh, yeah, yeah. And those are guys that, that, that just know how to do it, too. Well, then you got a guy like Dak, who's a rookie this year, but he played extremely well. And then, you know, the Steelers, the Steelers have problems because that defense is no good. That defense is sorry. That's a team I thought would contend for the AFC title, but they're not going to sniff New England with that defense right now. Not no, even close. Not. You're, you're right. They're not. Well, speaking of New England, um, Gronk, out. Perforated lung. Did you see How that? How long? Uh, I hadn't that... seen the number yet. Mm, Cam Chancellor put on him? Yes, it did. No, it was it was Earl Thomas. Oh, wait. Okay, okay. I'm, yeah, I'm sorry, you're right. I'm thinking about the last play of the game. Yeah, no, no. The, this uh, is, controversial. This is Earl Thomas. Oh, you're First okay. Of all, yeah. Gronk played that game sucking wind and having a hard time getting any in his lungs. But Earl Thomas, Earl's not a big dude. He's not a big guy, especially compared to somebody like Gronk. Earl Thomas just caught Gronk limp, and he leveled him. Uh, that's a rough game, and I'm, I'm bringing it up really. If the New England Patriots are to lose Rob Gronkowski at this juncture in the season, they're not the same football team. They're not the same, but I still think they're, they still could potentially be good enough to get to the Super Bowl without him. But, yes, not having Gronk is a huge difference. It's huge. They, it, uh, Edelman hasn't done what Edelman is able to do. Uh, it doesn't really seem to be a huge part of that offense. I think that the, the most efficient player on that New England Patriots team is LeGarrette Blunt, without question. Leads the NFL in touchdowns. He's been incredible. He bowls everybody over. Uh, guy, guys are, he's a great running back. I... I I didn't give him enough credit the last few years. He is, but he will, he, he's a kind of player that will feel the effects of a no Gronkowski because don't think he's not. Yeah, he runs very hard. Right. It's very hard to bring down. But you have to, there's so many things when Gronk is on the field that you have to be paying attention to him at all times where it really no, frees right. up you to do so many different things. No, that big, that big safety, that big strong safety plays on his heels when Gronk is lined up. He plays on his heels when a guy like Martellus Bennett is lined up on the other side. Both of those safeties sitting back really, really gives a guy like LeGarrette Blount the opportunity to get ahead of steam. It, you're right. You're 100% right. It makes a huge difference. So that's why I think that this, the, the, the structure in the game plan of the New England Patriots can change quite a bit if you take a guy like Gronk off the field. Now, Martellus Bennett's no slouch. No. No. If, he, if you've got Gronk and him on both, both sides of the field, it's almost impossible to cover. Stop. It's tough to stop, um, and, and it really opens up the running game quite a bit, which, you know, it, it, that's just something that's really been the theme of, of, of this whole conversation is the running game. If you can't run the football in the NFL, you're not any good. You're just not any good. Show me a team that can't run the ball, and they're still a good football team. It's just it's so rare. There were times years ago where the Patriots didn't run the ball very well. They ran it just enough. Just enough. But when push came to shove and you couldn't run the ball and the New York Giants put the front four up your ass, you couldn't win games, you couldn't score points, you couldn't push it downfield. On an offense, you have to be – you have to have balance is what the key is. You have you to have – do. Team, teams have to be able to respect you on both fronts. For the L.A. Rams, people can load the box on Mr. Gurley. 
where they don't have they don't they, they're not worried about they're, they're, they go into the mindset the mentality of if Case Keenum beats us oh well I mean we're not